So um, I think they were all printed on the resolution then. Mm -hmm. um, so that's all I am. That's the first time in a long time that we've raised rates, probably yeah. in decades, probably, huh? Yeah, it was like 20 years. 20 years ago. <laughs> it's been a while. I think that would be acceptable then the rate increase over 20 years. And everything just a flat rate increase of 20. So, mm -hmm. so a dollar per year since the last rate increase. <laughs> awesome. And are you working on the online? Is that That's after? part of Matt. Matt's, yeah. okay. Matt, are you able to hear us yet, sir? Yeah, I can hear you guys. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. How about if we get to your special presentation? Thank you for being here tonight. And uh, go ahead with your presentation, sir. Thank you all for having me. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. I'm going to start by sharing my screen with you because I have a, um, a prototype of the website. Okay. Can you see what I have right now? Right now there's a blank screen map. Okay. Um. <coughs> All right. I think I should fix it. Can you guys see the site now? No. No, you still just have a lot of... Uh... We're just seeing your coding. Sorry about this. I'm not a Zoom expert myself. No problems. Is this better now? Yes. yes. There we go. Now we have All right. It. All right. Um, this is the homepage of the proposed website. Um, keep in mind, the design of the site isn't very important at the moment. It can be changed very easily. It's more about the functionality. Um, I only have three links at the homepage. Um, send us a message. It takes us to the village homepage. Pricing obviously just shows the pricing of each um, pavilion for specified groups, times. And then the important part is booking. So here we have a calendar of January through, I believe it's October, that the pavilions are open. And users can go in and see um, pavilion dates that have been already scheduled by the key and colors marked off on a certain date. So if I were to click on Sunday the 1st, which has all three colors, meaning all three have already been reserved, you can't reserve a pavilion for this date. If I were to go to Monday the 2nd, which has no colors listed, you can reserve any pavilion. And to see the price, you can mark your residency status. Um, in order to reserve a pavilion and um, answer your card information, you have to fill out all fields. So I'll do that real quickly so we can see. This will take us to Stripe. You can enter all your payment information. I'll do that quickly so you can see. Matt, real briefly, is there a fee for using credit cards on this? Probably 3%. Um, on top of the 3% fee, there's no extra cost. Um, I believe if the price is low enough, you're charged a flat fee of, I think it's 15 cents but I don't think that's applicable to the prices that we're charging here. Can I ask a question as you're going along? Of course. What's to stop somebody from saying whether they're a resident or non-resident to put down as resident being the cheapest cost? Is there any checks and balances to 
you know. I suppose there's a new check to that right now, but very easily we could implement a feature where someone were to check applications and confirm them by um, entered um, data. Because with the credit card information, is there any information as far as uh, their residence or not? I'm sorry, I'm not following your question. When they fill out the information for the credit card information, am I seeing where it shows that you have a zip that was code? On the, you have a zip code. That was on the. Um, yeah, those are zip On a previous screen, they had to enter right. information. This is the residency here. Uh, okay. So you yep. Yep. So it shows their address. Yeah. One, one other thing too, the pavilions, uh, are they normally, uh, Kayla ever rented more than one customer per day? Like somebody in the morning and somebody in the afternoon or just one person per day? Yeah. If, um, like if someone needs it just for the morning and we know we have an afternoon, we can do that. They just have to specify. Most people though are just renting it for the whole day unless otherwise noted. Okay. That's another feature that could be added pretty easily, um, renting more pavilions than one per day. Okay. Also on that screen that you initially showed us where the, the pavilions were not available for the day, is there any way to add just a blur to that screen that says that they're not available for the day? Because I can yeah. see now somebody's going to be trying to click those buttons and they can't click it and they're just going to call the village hall and be like, I can't reserve it for this day. <laughs> yeah. Something like that can be added for sure. Perfect. Um, I'm sorry, I have to fill this out all again because I tab back. Enter valid information and keep in mind this is test mode. So you can enter any credit card or um, credit card code. Um, so, Matt, for people who, who are worried about their uh, personal information, because up on top with the uh, like the email address up on the top of the screen here it shows a a uh, lock on the top. Does that mean this site is secure and their information is secured? This lock here. Yep. Okay. Um, that that doesn't indicate that the information is secured, but it's never stored anywhere, so there's no way that someone could hack into the site and steal credit card information. Does that make sense? If you say it does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'd like to explain in a way that you're not just blindly trusting me. I'm sure that link or whatever that says there, link PayPal there, I'm sure it's a secure site. Pay faster, link, pay faster, and pay. Those are secure sure. sites. Okay, um, when you pay, you'll be redirected back to the site. And this is just a blank page thanking you for your purchase. And then you go back to the calendar. There'll be a new dot on the day that you selected. Is there anything, Matt, that, that could... I'm sorry, is there anything that can be done that can confirm the transaction and the date that was reserved, like a, uh, a confirmation page saying it was reserved on this date and the payment was received and everything is received that way? Of course, we do, we do confirmation pages, emails, I think even SMS messages. Okay. That is about the entirety of the site. Like I said, it's very, um, 
it's a prototype, so it can be changed very easily. If we use that system for the credit cards, where do where does that information go? For the credit the card payments. Credit card, the credit card numbers and information is never saved. Okay. So it's essentially just goes away as soon as you click pay. But the registration is kept in a secret or a separate database. Where so the payments would come to the village, correct? Yes. So where is that part recorded for the payments? Like where does it physically show that it's going into our bank? I suppose you have the list of registrations from the separate database on top of, I'm sorry if this is a misinterpretation of your question, but you also would have your bank statements just verifying the payment. So you need something more than a bank statement yes. monthly or quarterly or whenever. You need probably a daily or weekly for your reports and right. so forth for you to reconcile. Our other credit card processor, I can go in every day and look at their reports. Do you need more than um, a summary of the registration and the price? Yes. Could you set it up to our credit you, card processor? I'm sorry, was that a question for me? Yes. Could you set it up to use our credit card processor? I'm sorry, I can't hear you very well. Can you, can you instead of using this processor, could you set it up to use the credit card processor that we currently use? I'm, I didn't hear I most of the question. I'm sorry. Yeah, Dave, your mic is off. Yep. There you go. Instead of using the credit card processor that you have, that you've been using here, could you use the one that we currently use already with the village? Do you know what the name of that software is? The company is called Hammer. I'm not sure of the software name, but I could find out. I could look into it. I think it could probably be done, but I don't want to give any um, answers that I'm not completely sure about. That's understandable. Yeah, for Alyssa, you could check in to see if that can be converted over to the credit card company that we currently use for other payments. That would be super. That would be the best scenario, in my, yes. in my opinion. Yeah, to utilize the same. Mm -hmm. Matt, do we also get the, the person booking the thing gets a confirmation? Do we also get a confirmation that they booked it? Or do we have to go in no, and check it? Yes. So is that something that's already done or something that can be done? Yeah. That's something that can be done. Can be done, okay. <clears throat> so basically we need confirmations for the customer and, and uh, the village and daily, uh, re uh, I guess, re reporting of every act activity reports for uh, on a daily basis for our treasurer to be able to keep accounting for this. Well, if we use the same site that we use now, then that's not going to be a problem. That's if, right. if, he, if he can do that, yes. Yeah. Yep. Matt, it looks pretty uh, self-explanatory, and I'm sure if I ever had a problem with this, I could get any one of my kids to help me out, and they could do it in about two seconds. I'm not very IT uh, literate, but it seems very straightforward and simple. It seems like a very nice, clean... Uh, site to be able to book and I think a lot of people in addition to coming in and doing it in person would be I think this would be a, a great thing to have because I think uh, I think people have been wanting this for a long time and uh, it's been a long time coming so it looks very good is this, is this uh, the cost mm. the, the cost for it was what Matt what, there was a what was the cost for this here the possibility of using $750 and is this a, considered a one-time fee or, or an annual fee? One time. And there wouldn't be any maintenance required. Now, um, what would your involvement be moving forward 
Is this something that um, we would have to contract with you to uh, manage or I don't know what you call a, a webmaster or whatever, or, or would that be or Alyssa or one of our own people? And how would that work, I guess? I, yeah, we'll, first, we'll say, say if something, difficulties came up with it. Yeah, if, if we needed changes or there was uh, issues that came up with this once it was put into place and, and you said, uh, okay, thank you, and we thank you, and you moved on, is this something that, I don't know, we would contract with you or somebody else uh, to continue to manage this uh, site? I would fix any broken elements in the site. Okay. And I do know where you live, or where you did live, so you live right around the corner from me, so. <laughs> That's not creepy at all. <laughs> hey, Matt, if we get those couple issues resolved, how soon could it go online? I think those issues, okay, confirmation for clients in um, the village. And I think that could be added within this week. And if you wanted me to look into changing the payment system to something other than Stripe, um, it depends whether or not it's doable. But I don't think that would take very long either. Um, I, I'm i sorry, I don't understand. What was the reason to change to a different credit card payment service? So we get notification every time a payment comes in and we have accounting of it. Do you need email notification or something else? Like like a report that's saying you had okay. 65 pavilion rentals, this is how much money you've generated, um, something okay. on the back end. Do you just mean report. the analytics of sales? So sometimes we have to look up people's credit card payments by their credit card number, and with our current credit card okay. processor, we can do that. So if, okay. we, if we could transfer over to our credit card yeah. company I that see. we currently do business with, that would be, the, you wouldn't have to worry about all these different things. It's just a conversion over to this credit card company that we currently use. And what about, I see. Um, and, yeah, because also what, um, what about refunds and things like that? Right. Uh, if there's a, a need for a refund, if we don't have, if their if information doesn't right. exist, then we have, because uh, refunds are always put back onto the credit card that it was <coughs> taken from. If we don't have that information, we cannot do that. So, okay. So, the policy right now, and we can change it, that it's been forever, is if you have to cancel your pavilion, if there's not another person willing to book, you don't get refunded the money. Yeah, but still, so, it's, yeah, yeah. No, I understand where you're coming from. I just wanted that known if people are listening. Yeah, and it's, it's, yeah, it's one thing if somebody had given us a check or cash, right. for, and then we just re refund it from the village. Um, to them, but if but if it's on, when it's on a credit card, it's a whole different ballgame. Mm -hmm. right. So uh, th she would need that she would need that information on a day on a on a daily basis as it comes in. Um, so it would have to be, a, a, and a, then it would have to be also secure, which means the site that she current she currently use is is mm -hmm. a, is a secure site, and it would um, be managed as such. So that's that's I think that's a very uh, valuable part of this. Can, no. Kayla, is that policy anywhere where you just said the, the refund policy? Because I'm thinking you may want to put it on yeah. this website through this process before somebody clicks confirm yes. for their payment information. Sure. Correct. So yeah. they know, yeah. um, yeah. And, it, and it's right there when they're reserving the pavilion, yeah, whatever. They, that, they get the paperwork. Sure, and sure. go over it. So yeah, yeah. Could, I can give that language to Matt as well. Yeah. Okay. Alyssa, do you have Matt's contact information if you need to talk to him? I'll get it from Kayla okay. if I don't. I About think I do. Credit card. Okay. Okay. Seems like all the small little issues here could be ironed out very quickly and uh, we could start get this up and running very soon. Mm -hmm. Is there any other questions That's or good. comments for Matt? Okay. Nope. Thank you. Matt, thank you. This is a very big project here that uh, you undertook and this could actually make life for our residents much simpler and easier and probably for our employees here <laughs> in a way too where 
not having to man a book on a daily basis uh, for, with an employee. So um, thank you, and uh, I'm sure Kayla and Alyssa will be in touch with you with uh, the different uh, concerns and, and things moving forward. So thank you very much for everything you've done so far for the village. We appreciate it. Thank you all for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. <clears throat> awesome. Okay. Uh, we, with the resolutions, we have one walk-on resolution that uh, you were handed right before, right at the beginning of the meeting here. Thank you. Does any, just to confirm, does anybody feel like we need to go into executive session for that before the meeting, or are we all okay? Is everybody okay with that resolution with the uh, change of a position of personnel specialist? Do we need to discuss anything further in executive session before we move forward on this resolution? Not hearing anything? I say we'll move forward then. Okay. So I'll add that to the resolutions. Okay. Under new business, new auditing policies. Alyssa, could you explain that? In little, so in detail? our audit recommendations for things that we should fix, we were asked to add a few new policies to the way we do things and just actually have them in writing. Um, so there is a bank reconciliation policy, a journal entry policy, and an IT policy, which isn't in here yet. But I took off of the, from the auditors, they sent me basically the policies to just input our information, so the Village of Fredonia and who actually handles it, just to have something set in stone that we should be following. So they are both attached here, and then I'll have the IT policy as soon as I mark that up for us. Policies and policies. <laughs> you have to have them. Okay, thank you. Appointed committees from the mayor. They're essentially the same. I just had one minor change. If there's any questions, feel free to. And at this point, with the committees and subcommittees, the board can alter them. You can add to them. You can subtract to them. Uh, but it's going to be by board resolution. But the board can do that at this point with my appointments if uh, the board so chooses to change any of the appointed positions. Number three, the Urban Vantage Contract Renewal. Sure, we have some discussion or questions on that. Well, and we had uh, spoken before. Um, now that we have um, grant writers from Labella at our disposal, it seems that um, having a grant writer that we're paying for doesn't seem to be a um, good use of our resources. So, uh, in speaking with um, Melanie, she indicated that at the next meeting there, we need to have a resolution stating the contract has been expired. And she recommends that um, there's a notification letter written to them that you sign and we send off to them. So that we no longer, we just do not continue to uh, extend their, the contract is what, is there any other questions or comments on this? Okay. So can that be uh, for a resolution for the next meeting? Please, thank you. Number four, IT company. I know we're having some issues with uh, that company and the person there that comes and fixes our computers. Some discussion, please. And I think recently there was, we had more issues with them. Um, would you like to enlighten us? So basically, I just can't get a hold of him via email, via telephone, anything. He sent me invoices for the last half of the year. I didn't pay them because we can't ever get a hold of him. As soon as I received them, I emailed him back to see if maybe I could catch him on his computer because I just received them. Still no answer. There was a time period a while back where... We had some issues at the DPW to handle some, I guess, updating of uh, programs, and we were unable to get a hold of this gentleman. 
And uh, if you try the self or the number that we he gave it gave us to contact him with, that it rang up like disconnected or not available. So it's it like he fell off the end of the earth, and it, it was probably about a good three or four weeks before he resurfaced and came and and did some things around Village Hall there for a while. And uh, at that point in time, I did contact uh, Melanie to, uh, did we draw up a, a, a sample resolution or, or, or paper or something? We did start to draft something. I don't think it was ever finalized. No, I think it was, it was in preparation for the continued discussion about these difficulties that the yes. village was having. So we can certainly finalize that if the board wishes to proceed forward with that. I just think at this point, we need to secure a IT company that can be reliable and assess all the different needs that we need. But with that being said, I know uh, Trooper Wall is not a, a village employee, but <coughs> he is very, very knowledgeable with everything that has computers or microphones or televisions in our, in our uh, village hall here. He would be very knowledgeable to maybe write up some specifications that you would like a IT company to be able to handle. If there's any uh, upgrades, again, that need to be done. This is the thing too, in the contract that we the, that was previously signed to do upgrades in Village Hall here, I'm not sure if all these different things were accomplished or completed to completion that we're supposed to have done, all the different things. I know we have uh, Wi-Fi set up in the Village, but I think there was a lot more than that. There were switches that had to be replaced and upgraded that I'm not sure were ever done. But uh, you know, these were all things that were part of the service contract, and I, I don't think they were ever done to uh, completion or any. I'm not satisfied with uh, not being able to get a hold of somebody at all when we need somebody, and you end up having to call somebody else, and you're paying for another company and other companies aren't obligated to give us the same service as you would if, if you contracted with somebody because you're just another customer off the street. So, you know, I know there's a local uh, company that offers it and you just can't call them up and say, no, we have an emergency, come, come over here. They're not obligated by any contract to mm -hmm. react to you any sooner than any other uh, person. So uh, I would ask if, if the board would be okay with having Chip with the input of our office personnel to come up with specifications and put out an RFP for an IT uh, service and uh, if there is any things, upgrades that we need that weren't included or accomplished with this last contract to be done because I know that there were things with these uh, switches that needed to be upgraded I think that's very probably important for the information coming in and out and is making it, sure everything's secure. Is it possible just to hire Chip? We do. We will have to get more quotes. Yes, but yeah. Chip Chip could could apply for it. Could absolutely. Chip could well, put in a proposal. Proposal, yeah. he can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do we need to? Um, we're still under contract with. Right. But yes. there are provisions to terminate the contract that I think we were looking at. We to. were talking about that. I just can't remember them off of the top I of my head um, as I sit here today. But yes, there were provisions that we would look to implement. Um, okay. And I, we can talk about that and get that ready for the next meeting and update the board accordingly. Yeah. I mean, Perfect. just generally in the provisions in the contract that if you're, you're supposed to be able to be able to contact that company and within a certain amount of time they're supposed to respond back to you and then okay. within another certain okay. amount of time they're supposed to be able to come and be able to start working on the issue. All these things have not been met per the contract. So, and there was just some questions in the beginning with myself of the company had changed ownership and the contracts really hadn't changed and the new owners had signed the old contract that was out there originally, and I just had some questions that if that was, you know, the right thing there. So, if we could work on that with a actually a resolution then to terminate the service agreement with the uh, uh, what's the uh, company Simlink, yes. and then put out a have. Uh, 
if it's okay to have Chip and our office personnel work on a RFP for uh, whatever we need to have that company or person do. Yeah. Okay. All right, super, thank you. I have one thing uh, under new business. The Russell Joy Park Sensory Zone grant application was not selected for funding by the New York State Parks and Renovation and Historic Preservation through this current application process. I do believe we included it in the New York Forward grant application, which is still out there waiting for um, notice if we receive that. That was a four and a half million dollar grant that's still out there that included probably about $10 million worth of projects that the state would go through and prioritize. We had prioritized a bunch of projects, mm -hmm. but the state would go through. And uh, we should have actually heard from the state on this back in December, but any day now, we're looking to hear from that. Any comments or questions on that? No. Is there any other new business? Um, couple things. Um, Susan Parker had sent me um, the, um, some information about a grant that would, might have been possible for um, high hazard dams uh, funding um, through a program called Making Waves uh, with the New York State. And um, so I sent that forward to our um, engineering company. Uh, Lavella, and they um, investigated what they found out was that we normally would have been uh, able to apply for the grant, but um, Chautauqua County um, has to um, update their uh, hazard, mitigation. hazard mitigation policy. So with that, um, until that gets completed um, and they put us back in the state, puts us back in that um, zone for the ability to apply for this grant. Um, it, it kind of puts us out of the ability to get that grant. So Do we need it, to speak to the county to find out when? Well, that's what I was going to ask the mayor if he could speak with someone from the county level yeah. um, to, um, to see if um, when that could possibly take place. Um, yeah, I'll try to get a hold of the contact person there. I know myself and Chief Myers had originally attended a like a kickoff session of all that. And uh, I know they we needed to provide some more information from our side, and I've gone back and forth playing email tag with a college intern that was helping out and doing that. Mm -hmm. But I think I will try to reach out to, I think it's Chris Wildgaz, I think. I think he was a gentleman from the county that might be. So that, yeah, that, that, uh, that plan, their medication plan um, for the county expired in January of 2022. So that's what I'd hoped it would been have been completed this year. Um, and it's, it's not completed yet. Um, this application um, for this grant would have been due on February 10th of 2023. Um, they would have gladly applied for us, but um, they did discover that it's not a possibility. Okay. Okay, and um, we have, um, in, well, I don't know if this would be under old business. Um, you want to wait to old business? For that thing, but, uh, under, for new business, um, we have, um, for the wastewater treatment plant, um, some issues that came up about during the, uh, in, in December, having to do with the uh, um, power outages, um, causing, um, uh, the deleterious uh, effects to the um, electrical system, uh, electrical equipment. Um, and um, cause, causing us to have some uh, significant cost to our plant. Um, it also had an uh, effect within this building too, um, to the HVAC system. But we have um, spent a lot of money on generator systems. And I'm wondering why the, the, the generators are, are not amply solving the issues of power outages, so we're not burning out motors and things. Um, I think in this power outage, Trustee Linden, it wasn't a full power outage. It was, they lost like one or two legs out of a three uh, uh, 
three phase power system, and that's why large machines that run on three phase were affected by it. I think one leg may have, uh, one of the phases may have been knocked out. And in those cases, like at the school, we also, I know we suffered some damage here. I, I don't think it, it fully kicks on your uh, uh, generators, or if it does, I, it was just such a, that was a freak power outage. It wasn't a, just a full, you lost your power and the generators kicked in. You still had two phases of power burning out motors and, and large uh, machines and so forth. Uh, so, it's, so as a, it, there isn't anything that we could address with our with this system then to keep prevent that from happening, um, because uh, you know I hate to see it continue this well, as an issue. But was the was the damage enough that we should turn it into insurance? Well, that was my one of my next question. Is is um, I asked Alyssa if she could check into it. She said she would look into it. Um, but but because that was, we all have everything in place to prevent such a thing, as much as we could, as it sounds like. Um, but um, it was an event um, outside of our control um, that possibly that our insurance would cover the costs. I mean, they were pretty significant. I mean, the, the you know the system, heating system here, um, you know, main screw pump, you know, at at at, uh, at the. At the plant, um, you know the blower issues. I mean, there was a lot of lot of a lot of uh, significant costs that were endured by uh, by the village. If if uh, insurance would cover, it'd be great. Sean, what were an estimated amount of costs that you so incurred at the waste? What happened plant? was the equipment wasn't running properly, and it, usually when you go to generator power, you your whatever's on generator power very limited equipment there. You just get the basics when we're on generator. So usually the pump shuts down when the power goes out, generator comes on, everything comes back on, the pump will come by on by itself. Well it didn't, this time it didn't, so we had to restart it. We had other problems throughout the plant with you know um, the new equipment, the valve, uh, the actuators weren't working for us. Um, um, it was just, it was it was a weird event, like, like you said, Mayor, it was just, something that I never experienced before, you know. And it seemed like we were on generator power, then we're on grid power, and then on generator grid power. Like, like it was going back and forth. But I call these um, these people uh, that do our semi-annual inspection and PM on our generators um, to get some knowledge on what's going on. And the guy said, he says, the switch gear will switch, the transfer switch will switch. It's either in grid power or it's either on generator power. There's no in between. So there really isn't, uh, as far as I can tell, damage for our electrical on, on our equipment. Um, we do have a problem with the screw pump. It went down, but it was a different screw pump. This one was number three, and that's a drive issue. That needs to be looked at, and I've got um, three contractors coming to look at that right this week. So with that dirty power or whatever you want to call it, it, it does, that place has been, you know, it's got a history of, 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 of uh, tripping out. You get a call out in the middle of the night, all you got to do is come in and reset something and you're done and that's it. It just seems the power, you know, and who knows, you know, but this was a weird event. And so uh, is, there, is there a cost? That you can put to this, that you get a um, of, of this event um, that we could turn into the insurance company. No. There isn't no. a cost to that. Okay, that's the way it, the way you wrote the letter to us. It kind of uh, sounded like there was uh, some casualties to 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 the plant that would have, um, well, like there was to the village hall, which I think that could be at least turned in. Um, I don't have my email right in front of me. I could explain it, but I I didn't know it yet. I did have I did have concerns about the equipment, but everything seems to be right. And we've got the generator guy coming out this week, Thursday. So, you know, hopefully I'll find out if there's anything wrong. If we find something there, I might have something to give to Erlissa. Yes, that's, that's all I got for that. Erlissa, how much uh, roughly estimated damages did the village hall incur with the heat pumps down below? I have not received any bills yet. I'm not sure what okay. the cost of it was. We had both uh, Gaginos and, and uh, 
uh, back electric here with that, correct? Yes. Yeah, this is a, you know, I don't know if like these transfer switches switch over if there's still two phases, you know, driving the motors slow and, and this, but that's where it, what screws up these large motors. They need to be on three phase, and if they're on two phase, it's like a, what they call brownouts, probably okay. some, similar to that. Yep. And that's really bad that's, for things. Yeah. It's either your power needs to go out completely, or you need to have full power, full phase, three phase power for these things. So we'll look into that if it's uh, something that could be re recuperated by mm -hmm. insurance right. funds. But uh, it sounds like right now you're going to do some PM on the machines, see if they suffered any serious uh, damage. And if so, then you come back to us with an uh, update on, on those costs. Is this something we need to check with National Grid as to why legs are going down instead of the whole system? Or I mean, it sounds like a National Grid issue, too. That's when we had the high winds. I mean, whether, you know, yeah. this yeah, isn't is. something that's normally, a, uh, I think, an occurrence. This is, a, as far as I've ever been, in my lifetime, I've never had an occurrence like this. This is like a once in a lifetime so far in my lifetime, so it's not something that's. I mean, I would look into, I would talk to National Grid about it as well. Well, when we had the outage, they called. And I got the phone tree. And I kept getting the phone tree, and I kept getting the phone tree. So, you know, I'd, I'd like to talk to someone. Uh -huh. I, I want to know what's going on. And thankfully, thank God, Scott, I called Scott and he had the answers. Yeah. And so I'm very grateful for that. And, and maybe once, uh, if, if we're able to get so, our solar field down there, um, between the solar field and our generator, maybe we wouldn't have to rely so heavily on the grid. <laughs> but, well, that would... Uh, Supply you with the media. I mean, it goes so, into the grid. It doesn't. You can't. Tr yeah, you're not no. storing it in batteries or anything. But no, you wouldn't be storing. No, but the, the the solar would go directly to the plant before it would go to the grid down there at that at that location. Okay. So, but anyhow. Um, that's all for. Anybody else have any new business? I guess under it's under new business. What's that? As far as old, is that new or old? You're on. I'll go move to old business if there's no more new okay. business. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'll move to old business. Town of Pomfret Water and Sewer. Have we had any correspondence back, uh, or Alyssa from our attorney from their attorney, Mr. Pasfero? Well, did we ask him to send him anything? Yeah. No, because the last Here meeting we, we had, you you had instructed me to get hold of Mark to see what um, what attorney fee we would incur if, if we, we decided to press forward. And it was he told us that I sent out an email to everybody. It's going to be a minimum of twenty five thousand um, dollars for him to represent us with the possible. Uh, $5 fee if it goes to mediation and there according to the contract we will not we're not eligible for any reimbursement if we, if we Legal fees. Yeah. yeah so you know we have to ask ourselves do we want to um, <laughs> invest possibly $30,000 to avoid a $12,000 loss I guess and I, I think that question is Pretty self-explanatory. I, I guess the question is, do we want to sell them any more additional water until they pay that? We're not worrying about that at this point. We're, we're, what we're looking at is being reimbursed for what we feel we're owed, but be able to uh, negotiate in good faith with them and perhaps for the remainder of the contract, um, look at the say what look at the contract the way they're looking at it. Tell you what, I, the way they're looking at it is correct. Uh, I find it appalling that the town of Pomfort would would hold us to this, um, trying to say that we're not um, understanding the way they agreed to the contract. Um, and we the contract was was amply negotiated. It was discussed on, from all the parties. The attorneys were reviewed it on both sides. Their board their board reviewed it. And um, agreed to it, and their and their and their supervisor signed it. It, um, it, it was clearly a, a, a good contract. Um, they don't want to pay it the way it reads. Um, we build them as, uh, properly. Uh, went went over that with with the um, the meter reading department and the and the village treasurer. 
and, um, and, and the attorneys, and, and our attorney feels that um, it's a good contract. Um, I don't know if there's a judge in this world that would <laughs> disagree with that. Um, and the, th the thing is, is when that was, when that, even though I didn't agree with that contract back there um, because of the concessions that the, <laughs> the, the village made for it, the, the, the village did make all the concessions. There was, there was nothing made on their part. And um, they were given a, a even even with the amount that we agree that we believe they should be paying, they're still getting a very significant reduction in the cost of water from what they were paying prior to that contract. They should be happy to pay us and then move forward with this in into the future um, as the contract reads to finish out their their term of that contract. And maybe we could re then renegotiate a different contract. But in the meantime, they're also considering wanting us to, to sell us water for um, future districts. I mean, if they don't want to pay us for under the contracts now, I mean, who knows what's going to happen with any other contract? And um, I think that we should hold them to the contract as written, um, regardless of uh, where we have to go with to make this uh, make this happen. I think that the, the, the a judge would certainly have side with us on this. And I realize well, that there's, there's a, a cost to going to court with it, but I think that the um, if if we tell them we're we're pushing forward, that they should. Actually, stand up and say, "No, we're not going to go in for. We're going to pay you for what you. It is a reduced cost. What we used to pay, significantly reduced cost, and we're going to be happy to pay that cost. And I think that's where we should stand. But that's that's my stance. I don't know how the rest of the board feels, but I think that we should go. I I, I agree with your sentiment, and I think that they should stand by the contract. But after after being in enough meetings with them and, and listening to their point of view and hearing Mark tell us. Um, what their attorney is saying and, and what their supervisor is telling the attorney to tell us, it's become very clear that um, unless this goes to some kind of, in front of some kind of judge, their, their stance is not going to change. They want to play and, hardball with us. And yeah. I refuse to, I refuse to agree to spend $25,000 are to, to, to try to recoup $12,000 just on the basis of we're right I and they're wrong. I hate to give in to them, though. I, 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 I mean, really this, this, is so, this is bullying of our town to the village, the, the, the nucleus of our, of our community. Setting this is well, setting yeah. a precedent. Okay. They're, bully, they're trying right. to bully us into, into right. um, giving them an even better deal than what, than what they agreed upon. Jim, I, I agree with you 110 percent and I, I see John's point of saying why are we going to spend 25,000 to gain 12 so what my status would be is to say from now on, if you don't want to pay us we're not going to we don't even want to discuss future water with you if you don't want to pay us the money you owe us then then you stay with what you have that's a contract and if you want a future water district we don't care why are we even negotiating with them or talking to them if they don't want to pass the bill? They've so already let's just end threatened that. that to us. If they're well, saying we're going to go to Dunkirk. We're sitting then let them go to Dunkirk. Right. It's we're going to cost them twice I don't think money. we should even go to court. I think that we're sitting on money due and let it keep building up. If they want to let, let, the, let, the, let the, the amount keep building. Um, they're not paying late fees on it, Jim. They're not going to be paying, they're not paying late fees on it. So the, the money that we're currently owed, about $68,000, is our funds that we could use. Right, so if we want to play hardball and say, "Listen, we're not going to," you know, you either pay us everything that's due, or we don't want to talk to you about it. It's, well, the amount, it, that, the it's, amount's going to keep increasing, and, and and at some point, it's going to increase to the point where actually it would have, have value to for us to go through, go actually into court. <laughs> it, uh, seriously, it won't. It won't. Sure Be, would. No, it won't, because the only thing they're not paying us is about four thousand a year, right? Four thousand a year. So at the end of the contract, they'll owe us twelve thousand. Then the contract's done, and then we can renegotiate that contract. Well, then it's actually cheaper than just to sit on it. And, and if they still owe us twelve thousand at the end of the contract, then it's cheaper for us just to sit on it than it would be to go to court or do anything else about it. So yeah. we, correct. So, correct. So, so so that's correct. what I'm saying. Well, we so but, do, but don't, do, don't 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 give in to them. Tell is, them we, is, we, they still owe it. Them. Okay. No. They still owe it. I'm not going to agree to something lesser than what the contract So, paid. So the $68,000, you, you're okay with that sitting out there at this point that they owe us? I think we'd have to. I think well, that they're paying us some of that, right? No. Not that yet. No. no. The, this was... The, I think the public were, needs to funds. know what's, what's going on yeah. in that department. The $68,000. And they were given a, a darn good deal. 
and that and they were they were um, they could we could have never negotiated this contract to where it was. I'm surprised the previous board went for that contract, but they were given a very very low price, which is in my opinion less than what the average person in the village pays and and and, 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 they're, and they're balking at that and, 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 and that's that's a slap in the face to the village and i think that they that they need to um the people need to go to their town board first and tell them that they need to pay up the last conversation i had with dan pecos about this he said well why don't we just clean the slate and start all over again I think it, it becomes very dangerous when we start looking at a town as our adversary. Right. Well, that's what they're no, looking I, at towards I do. us. And, and I think I think we're putting them in, we're putting each other in that position. And I think cooler heads need to prevail. I think we need to negotiate with them. I, I don't think we should give the the people of the village should take one for the team on that one too. Legally, I'm not sure we can. The contract says. X, Y, and Z. The only thing that was amended to the original contract that was drawn up decades ago was the difference in price of the sale of the water. All the other conditions were to remain intact. Right. Unfortunately, whatever discussions were had with some of previous board members to the town officials had no bearing on it, even though I think I think that's where town officials are, are coming at us with, well, it was, you know, during negotiations, we, mm -hmm. we said we were going to do this. Mm -hmm. Well, unfortunately, at the end of the day, when the contract was signed, Supervisor Pecos signed the contract with the stipulations that are in there now, and I signed it, and we both have to be held to that. Now, if there was some corrections that we made in uh, base fees or whatever because there was no master meter, you know, there were some businesses or whatever, that should remain. I, I, at this point, we should continue to bill them as... The contract states, and if the late fees and, and back fees add up, they add up, and I just think keep track of those at the moment. We won't be adversaries, but we're not going to uh, <laughs> defer from our contract. We're not going to be adversaries. Yes, we are. At what point do we... They, at what <laughs> well, point I guess we're, we're already adversaries. Uh, I guess live with that. That's. I mean, that is the way it is. Uh, if that's the way it is, if they, if they chose to be that way, they're choosing this by not following the contract. We're not choosing to be adversaries. We're choosing to say, follow the contract. These are the things you have to pay, and let's move forward on it. Okay, so we've told them that, and we know their stance, so right? They want, so they want to be adversaries. Well, listen to me. So we told they know our stance. We know their stance. What do you suggest we do now? Do we continue negotiating with them? No, we just no. continue to build no. them for the fees that... The current fees that they owe, and continue to bill them for the back fees that they owe us for the outstanding water bills for Wendy's or whatever is due owe us as back fees, and can just continue to bill them. Well, at what point are they in breach of contract, and we can say to them, "Look, we can just cut off your water." I mean, at some point or another, we can. You're we correct. Gotta... Each party has a, a a certain period where you can give the other party notice to. Uh, I mean, if, if we're getting to the point where we're, why, why are we selling them water if they're not paying us? So why don't we just cancel the contract with them, tell them they're a breach? And let them make up their mind what the hell they want to do. If I think you need to read the contract, you can't do that. Well, that's what I'm asking. At what point can we do that? Because right now they're in breach. Then I would suggest that would be a great thing for Mark to do is to research what terms of termination of the contract are and say, yes, if you're not going to pay $60,000 in back fees, then we'll give you the, the notice because Supervisor Pecos has made no... Uh, no, uh, whatever, uh, 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 saying that, you know, if, if we don't get satisfaction here, we'll go to North County Water District and we'll terminate the, uh, the contract. Well, unfortunately, I think... it would think, be that easy either. Well, it, it won't be that easy. It is easy. It won't be that easy and we won't be losing money. Right now we're losing money. If, if we're not selling water, we're not losing mm -hmm. money. So well, why are we selling water and losing money? What was their last stance on that Wendy's $68,000 separate from the... The billing issue we haven't approached them yet it was it was the amount that <clears throat> wendy's was underbilled mm -hmm. and the quarter of underbilling totaled sixty eight thousand. that includes what wendy's was underbilled okay. so my <clears throat> recommendation would be to because they haven't been approached i don't think for that amount yet that we approach them for the sixty eight thousand continue to negotiate 
the four thousand a year which we feel they owe us that they feel they don't or if they haven't been approached by it yet bill them for the sixty eight thousand dollars and go from there if they don't right. pay it then we then we start talking negotiations they may say okay we agree with you we we owe you the sixty eight thousand but you haven't ap approached us yet for that so bill them that back amount i would say and then uh, if there's issues that you know they don't pay after that then that's what we start I wouldn't you know, trying to. There's no negotiation. I think when we when we send that bill, though, it needs to be made clear that this is a separate issue from, you know, what we can't agree on with the contract. Just keep in mind, we've already incurred more than five thousand dollars worth of uh, attorney's fees um, on this matter. So, I'm not suggesting have including attorneys on this. I'm suggesting our treasurer bill. The town of Pomfret for what they owe us and what back things they owe us, and see where there, where it goes from there. Is what I would say. And basically, there is really no go from there. We're following the contract. We've hashed this out back and forth a number of times. You're right, and this is why, you know, when the public sees our our legal fees, these are the things that cost so much. I'm not willing to add another thirty thousand dollars to our legal costs and have that have our, our, our citizens or residents of our village incur something that's needless, build them, and, and let's move forward on this. So, so the recommendation is to build them for what we believe they owe us and hope they pay. And then and expect them, and then to, expect and them and to pay. Hope they pay because they haven't yet. And then at the end of the contract, then we, then we re renegotiate the contract when no. we feel... No, expect no. them to pay and then look into the termination clause of the contract to see what that involves. They don't say, pay, if, they don't say pay, if you don't want to pay, then we'll terminate your service. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where I'm at with this. If they don't pay us their breach of contract, we, we cut their water. Well, I, I couldn't disagree more, but I guess I'm... That voice. At some point or another, we can't stop funding bad debt, and that's what it is. And at this point, we keep incurring legal fees, and it just keep, we keep going around the bush here. We keep going around the bush, and you know, we say you owe us this, and they say no, we don't. We're not paying you. And I'm not sure if they're paying anything up to date currently, other than are they paying what they feel they owe us on a day, on a monthly basis or whatever. Quarterly what, basis. Well, what, what they feel. Yeah. What they feel. Well, unfortunately, mm -hmm. the contract says differently, and I think we need to build right. them what the contract says. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then if they don't, I agree. If they don't, uh, stick to that. Uh, and we certainly have no reason to entertain any future water districts or anything else until this is made whole. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's move forward. Any other old business? Yeah, I um, was wondering when the uh, park pl park project will be totally complete. I know there's some of the crossing signs or the poles are still there and the wires are hanging out, but they don't seem to have been installed yet. That's actually part of the DOT, though, DOT project. We, we know when that might happen. I'm not sure. Okay. So that was not part of the placemaking project. That's a DOT. Yeah. We did the bump outs and stuff. And they were going to do the bump outs. It's a separate bump. Yeah. So, so, so DOT is responsible for the uh, crosswalk? Correct. Okay. Yeah. What about the uh, uh, parking meters? Do we, do we owe or order them at one point? We have six of them. Okay. We need to go up. Um, generally, some of them get knocked down in the winter time. You have to figure out a way to mount, take out the, the hitching post, the ballards, mm -hmm. put the, put the um, parking meters in. So, okay. in the spring, I was going to put those up because okay. they're going to take some abuse. Being in the position they're in, right? They're probably going to get ruined. It's so very hard, very hard to plow snow around this, the design. So we'll have them for one year, and then they'll get ruined, and we'll order new ones. Is there a better system? Can we move them? I, I mean, I'm sure there's a better, better system. I, I don't know what it is. Uh, we'll move them in further or something. Yeah. You yeah. can't. It's all concrete. It's all concrete. There's, no, yeah. there's nowhere to move. Yeah. It'll hold for a <laughs> I know other communities have them in the state. I don't know. What, what do they do about around them? I mean, they get snow too. I think they're, they're put in when they did the project. 
you know, there's a, there was a, a sleeve put in and then the meter goes in. This, they were told that the meters were getting removed when they did the project. And then it was reversed at the end of the project progressed and here we are. I think they, they were told removed and not being replaced. They, told, they were told that the meters were being removed and not replaced. Oh. That's okay. the project. Yeah. And maybe it's time that we start exploring like a kiosk system. Those are very, very costly. Very 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 costly. All the meters are back in, in. Except expensive. for I think like six or eight of them. That's all of this. They're still over on uh, Park, Street. Park Street and then in front of the gazebo. Um, so so not there's not a lot of meters. I, I, all the meters got put back up in all the green space mm -hmm. that we could you know, put them in. Okay. Um, right. So we're not talking a, a ton of meters. Yeah. Okay. Get the ones up you can and ones you can yeah. The only thing I had was that uh, fire hydrant in the corner of Temple and Lambert. It seems like that's been down for a while. It's been bagged for quite a while. Yeah. It sure has. It's, uh, we're not sure if it's off or on or how to shut it off. There's a couple different water mains there. It's mm -hmm. going to be a project. We're probably going to have to come in at night and open the whole intersection up. And I, was, I was asked about that. Yes, yeah. Okay. It, it's, it's high on my list. Okay. Um, there are other hydrants that are close to it that that's not a issue, correct? correct? So we, the residents are safe there with a, another, I mean, usually we have hydrants on every block. There's hydrants within hundreds of feet of that, you know, multiple hydrants. There's one right at the corner of Day and Lambert. There's another one over on Barbara. So there's, there's hydrants there. It will be taken care of this spring. Okay. Thanks, Scott. Any other business? Yeah, I'm just, um, just update on the, the solar the, um, opportunities. Um, I spoke with uh, our Mark uh, Guglielmi from the uh, village attorney's office. Um, he gave me an update today. Um, he did speak with Ryan Maurer, who's the code enforcement officer for the town of Dunkirk um, concerning the solar project at the uh, wastewater treatment plant. Um, he said that, um, that the ground panel systems, um, it, it would be a permitted use. Um, and so that is, it's a good, that's something good, but it would have to go through their board. Um, they did have the, their laws uh, put into place, I think it was uh, 2021, concerning um, anything to do with solar. Um, they had one, well, he had one question about, um, it was in the uh, D4 part, part of the regulations um, that, um, had to do with some restrictions for waterfront properties, but um, he didn't feel that that was going to be an issue because um, it's not the water treatment plant doesn't utilize that as a frontage like the the properties that that would be uh, as as in a front yard property uh, like some properties would on uh, the lakefront. Um, so anyhow. Um, He's, he was asked the uh, Siemens for to get a little some more particulars um, as far as the uh, site size and um, use of uh, emplacement uh, to move forward with that um, and get the permitting um, for that project. Um, the Pomfret site um, up off of um, he spoke with Warren Kelly um, about that site. Um, and um, we would definitely need a variance to go f further with it, um, but Warren felt that there would not uh, there would not be a blanket objection to that, according to him. Um, and uh, there are some some concerns with some neighbors. Um, there's only a couple of neighbors up there, two to three residents that may have an objection, but then that could be um, resolved, they believe. Um, so. Um, they would um, hope to move forward with that um, and be able to work, work through that within the next few months, is what Mark said. So that's where we are with the, that project. Okay, thank you. I have two quick things here. Uh, last year, our planning board alternate person who applied, uh, she rescinded her application, so we need to advertise for a Planning board alternate member, and number two, the DLT project. I re I have uh, correspondence. I asked Alyssa to send in to the DLT, Mr. Cirillo and the uh, Mr. Shaler, who's the.
planner architect for this Route 20 project. I asked, I had to put in writing to have uh, pedestrian signage put up in the springtime for crossing walks and non uh, lighted uh, uh, intersections. And I also put a request in for Mr. Shaler to, he said he was going to review the letter that was sent by the work group and come in and uh, address the board on any questions or concerns we had uh, in regards to the things that were suggested in the letter. So I gave the Mr. Shaler some dates here, the next date here in um, January, the two next dates in February to see if he can make a meeting to address the board on that. So that just went out today. So that's any other old business. Okay. Let's start the meeting. I call this meeting to order on Monday, January 9th, 2023 at 741 PM. Well, we'll roll call the trustees. Trustee Linden. Here. Trustee Twitchell. Here. Trustee Bird. Here. Trustee Syracuse. Here. Trustee Esperson. Here. Excellent. Well, please all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If there's any high school uh, got people here that need sign-offs on their uh, sheets, please come up real quick and we'll sign those off for you. There you go. So you can uh, have anybody. Yep. There you are. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Okay, we'll have approval of the minutes, please. Whereas members of this board have read the official minutes of the Board of Trustees regular meeting of December 26, 2022. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the board hereby approves the minutes as entered into the official minutes, and be it further resolved that the reading of the minutes be dispensed with. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Trustee London. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried. Public portion. This portion of the meeting is for public comment. Any member of the public wishing to speak once recognized shall stand in the microphone and state their name and address. Speakers will be allowed three minutes of speaking for themselves or five minutes of speaking on behalf of a group. I will ask the speakers to refrain from remarks that are in poor taste, slanderous, or not germane to any action taken or com contemplated by the board. I do not see any members of the public present in our meeting. Do we have any correspondence that needs to be read during the public portion? Yes. I have a letter of resignation from Eric Sawyer. Please. Oh, that'll be, oh. yep, that'll oh, be later. That's it. <laughs> okay, so I will close the public portion of this meeting and we'll move on to correspondence. That will be now, please. Please accept this letter as a formal notice of my resignation as a part-time police officer at the Fredonia Police Department, effective January 4th, 2023. After a period of consideration, I have decided that I will be accepting an offer for full-time employment with the Shock County Sheriff's Office. It has been with great pleasure to be alongside the individuals at Fredonia Police Department, and I will always appreciate the experience and knowledge I gained during my time here. I sincerely want to thank you and the Fredonia Village Board for allowing me to have the opportunity to serve and protect the community I grew up in and start my law enforcement career. Be it resolved that the resignation of Eric Sawyer is hereby accepted effective January 4th, 2023, and the mayor is authorized to write a letter to Mr. Sawyer thanking him for his service to the Village of Fredonia. Second. In a motion, a second. Trustee London? Aye. Trustee Twitchell? Aye. Trustee Bird? Aye. Trustee Syracuse? Aye. Trustee Esperson? Aye. Carrie? Correspondence dated January 5th, 2023 was received from Scott Marsh, DPW Superintendent, recommending St Scott Marsh, Charles LaBarbera, Richard Miller, and Stephen St. George as members of the Plumbing Board. Be resolved that Scott Marsh, 3226 East Main Road, Dunkirk, Charles LaBarbera, 29 Lincoln Avenue, Angola, Richard Miller, 204 Chestnut Street, Fredonia, and Stephen St. George, 3689 Webster Road, Fredonia, are hereby appointed as members to the Village of Fredonia's Plumbing Board 
which terms shall expire January 2026. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Trustee Linda. Aye. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried. Didn't we some correspondence from Mr. Cucciarelli. Yep. Didn't we already do this? I think it might be this a little different. This is an different. additional one. Yeah, so I guess that would have been up, up at the top, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. That would have been up further, but that's okay. I'll make a note. <laughs> This is a follow-up to an email sent a few weeks ago regarding the accessibility to storefronts on Main Street. As stated in the prior email, customers are having difficulty getting from the street to the sidewalks. Myself and other neighboring businesses are losing customers due to the lack of accessibility. It is not only difficult for the non-handicapped, but almost impossible for individuals li with limited mobility to gain access from the street and get to the parking meters. As a business owner for over 35 years and a taxpayer, I feel this issue should be addressed immediately. I would appreciate someone reaching out to discuss these concerns as I have not received any correspondence from my last email. I'm assuming uh, they're talking about what we have yeah, these large, yeah. unprecedented snowstorms. Mm -hmm. And no, under our normal situations, you do a fantastic job clearing the sidewalks and making sure there's paths between the curb and the roadway and to the businesses. I know you clear them. I would just ask people at this point, well, we have these large snow Thing, uh, events going on that you do need to be a little patient. We, uh, you can't be everywhere all the time, and you will. I, I have full confidence that our street superintendent will clear paths as soon as they're able to do that. This is more I, about, this the, con this yeah. about the concrete it has flower, flower beds snow. that are in it's front the of the store. It's the fact that there's this much room between the curb and that wall in between the street right. and the wall. Yeah. Yeah. I believe you, Scott, did reach out. I called mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And uh, basically, it's a state issue. We found out. I reached out to the state. They might say it's ours, but I haven't gotten that answer yet. So as soon as I hear back from them, I will reach out to a contractor and say, "Can we remove this? Um, or can we?" You know, I don't think we can. Though. I mean, it's, it'll be more of a hazard. I mean, the elevations have to meet. That's why they put a flower box in there, so the yeah. sidewalk isn't in a you know, such an angle. Right. right. Um, what was it's it been like that for 30 years. I was say, well, but what was it if prior to that? 30 years ago? <laughs> I, mean, uh, it, it was, I mean, at one point it wasn't there. <laughs> so I mean, It was when they did the, the Route 20 project in 1997. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They may have widened the road to the point where it became a problem back 30 years ago or whatever. I don't know. Hmm. The, the planter wasn't there, though, for, I mean, prior to that project. That flower bed, you mean? Yeah, but you're saying it's been there for 30 years, so 30 years ago when they widened that road, That's maybe that created that created that issue or whatever, which they had to fix, so. Yeah. No. Not being here 30 years ago, who knows why they did what they did or why, you know. Well, no then I say. retract my statements. I apologize. I thought we were talking about the snow, but. Um, <laughs> no. I think you were saying snow makes it worse when there's snow. When there's snow there. Either way, it's hard for the, for the, for the pedestrians to. Yeah. You know, navigate through there. Which it is, it's always been a problem. It's, so we'll look into some solutions and, and go from there. You know, maybe when they redo Room 20, it's the, it's the time to, to address it. Um, but I'm waiting to hear back from the state. Like I said, I reached out to the engineer from the state. And he's going to get back to me this week. Uh, Robert Shaler, uh, Mr. Sorelli, uh, Robert John. Okay, yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, we'll move on to our reports uh, before I do my normal report. I want to touch on a couple uh, subjects here that's been in the news and everybody's hot on is uh, Brooks Hospital. Um, I have tr I have tried to reach out to the state New York State Department of Health, uh, Miss Angela Profeta, who is uh, I guess high up in that. I emailed Miss Profeta on uh, December twentieth with a uh, very cordial email stating that you know we really need this to happen and it's essential i haven't heard anything back i've been in contact with ken morris the ceo of brooks hospital and they're just waiting for the state department of health to okay and approve their uh, plan uh you know you would think it'd be easier to get in touch with state officials but when i guess they don't really want to talk to you they you know, it's, I wish it was just as easy to make an appointment and call the governor up and say, I'd like to have, have a meeting with you. 
and that's can, just not can, the case. Can you do that? I mean, what, I, I, mean they I can't have, even. They, they I can't a, even get a number for this person from the State Department of Health. I got an email. Okay. But, I mean, the governor's office has contact number. You can actually ask for as as the mayor ask for a. Uh, um, okay, a Jim. Board. I hate to say it, but. That's not as easily. I will continue to try to contact the governor's office. I do not have a, a straight uh, number like some mayors here we have uh, locally have. I do not have that privilege, unfortunately. Uh, you know, I hate to say sometimes things are political, but uh, I do not have the same. Uh, I did see they, they, they announced that they were going to extend the uh, the uh, contract with the uh, well, the, up, the up on East Main no, Street. Well, yeah, they were they were extending the ability to keep that open for they didn't purchase they were, yeah. for purchase, which is a good thing. At least they're still continuing considering yeah. keeping that available. But make no mistake, I can tell you myself and other local leaders know it's essential to have a hospital here yes. in our community. Right. And you know, I guess mm -hmm. at this point, I would love it to be in Fredonia, and it probably makes a good fit, but whatever is the most economically feasible, sustainable hospital that meets all of our community's needs, that's where it needs to be put. But, you know, make no mistake, everybody's all in agreement that we cannot, our communities here cannot be without a hospital and go 20 minutes either to Westfield or half an hour to uh, UPMC Chautauqua. I think that their, their committee that the county um, executive put in place um, determined that this was the best site and it should be put here. And, and I, I That's guess great, but it's the State Department of Health that makes right, the final decision on all this. So Maybe we can author, offer Kathy's husband the vending rights to it and then it'll move along quicker like the stadium did. I mean, just so everybody knows, uh, you know, I think a lot of things are moving on behind closed doors that we're not, I'm not privy to, and probably a majority of us aren't, but I, I'm hopeful and, and very, uh, you know, that, with the, that this will soon take, with, you know, we'll have some answer one way or another. I mean, this is going on for mm -hmm. six years, seven oh, years now, mm -hmm. and it's just uh, ridiculous. With the extension in mind, um, the, um, I was wondering, uh, seeing as Chuck is here, um, Will they need another extension on their permits? Because that's about this coming time so soon. It, they're, uh, it was a year ago that they would have. Then, if after a year, they would have to have their permits um, extended, uh, ask for approval. That, that they maybe you would contact the, the hospital board and their attorneys to um, remind them that they would have to uh, update their permits with the village. And I don't know if the secret has to be updated too, but but. Um, or just a, or, but I know the, the permits with the village would have to be updated. Um, well, the only permits they have is from the planning board, the planning board approval. There's been no building permits or anything issued. Um, but they have um, asked the planning board last year for an extension, and the planning board granted it. They did, yes. We had a meeting last year, I think it was June. Well, this so year. They're good until this June. And it's good until this June. Which coincides with the okay. extension so. for the property. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would definitely think that the hospital's uh, legal team is on that because they want to move forward with this too. So I hope so. Okay, thank you. Um, the observer, with our legal costs, uh, the relentless and and not letting <laughs> us uh, move forward on costs that were, and I, I thought it was pretty well explained. I explained it in the past that these were unprecedented costs that were over the last, you know, previous two years where we had four collective bargaining agreements that were done in the same year. We had a number of uh, personnel issues, uh, litigations. There was a lot. Uh, Erlissa uh, did a little uh, summary here for me and I would ask her to explain where we're at. We're quite a bit, we're nowhere near as the 234,000 the observer keeps quoting Right. And that was over a period of, I think, a year and a half or two years. That was not one year's worth of, of expenses. Right. So uh, if you could explain where we're at currently, or Alyssa, and uh, give us a little. Do you have that email that you sent me, or you want me to? That's what I'm pulling up. Okay, yes. <laughs> Let 
while she's looking that up, it's a lot of things increase our costs, like the town of Pomfret, you know, dragging her feet on this water issue, where you know we have to keep conferring with our, our attorneys on this, and she keeps getting bigger and bigger. And yeah. that's why I wasn't really looking forward to say, let's do the thirty thousand right. dollar, you know, uh, legal procedure yeah, those, because yeah, those if we're real. trying to keep our legal costs down, that is not something that's going to keep our legal costs down. So for some reason it won't open on my phone. I can't well, remember as, the exact as number. As of the end of November, um, her, her um, treasurer's report stated that we had, uh, we were about 53.7% um, of the budgeted amount of, of, of 75,000 for the year. Um, as that's not that far out of line for the year, um, su surprisingly at this point. So, um, so we're just, we're, right now we're just slightly over for the year. So um, I did from December to November for to have an entire 12 months, and it was $97,299. But this included, like when you guys all first came on board, all of the mm -hmm. changes that took place there, the first two months of that were about 27 of that. Since yeah. then, mm -hmm. we've been pretty reasonable within the realm of what we would be paying if we actually had an attorney. Our own yeah, in-house attorney, I guess, is the best way to say it. Yeah, as, as from a, from December to from last year, so basically a year's worth. Right. But, but as far as this year's, um, within this year's fiscal fiscal Six budget, um, um, we're we're still actually surprisingly in not that bad a position. Uh, so. Mm -hmm. No, in the last few months, it's been eleven, about fifteen thousand in three months. So. So are we within our budgetary bond yes. uh, constraints of where we're supposed to be? Yes. So for the public to know and the media to know we're within our budgetary uh, amounts that we had budgeted for legal services, we are nowhere near where we were. To keep bringing it up is just a, a moot point. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's very uh, useless. Uh, point of information there because we're not there anymore and we are being fiscally responsible with our legal costs and I had asked our treasurer if there's places where you know somebody's going out of whack and, and things are getting excessive that we need to you know identify those and control those costs but at this point our legal costs are within our budgetary bounds and uh, there should be no question that we're doing well with our legal costs at this moment. If there's ever any questions, I would welcome the board to please contact mm -hmm. us and let us know if there's concerns about our time charges or invoices or the work that we're doing. Um, Mark and I are, I, I hope, very much available for any phone calls, emails, anything you need. And that includes asking us what we're doing. If you have questions about the work that we've been asked to do at our bills, we, we certainly welcome that. But this administration, we know the cost per hour of each person and, and their costs and it's uh, under it's uh, it's under our control of how much we spend and how much we utilize our, our legal services so and sometimes <laughs> sometimes it's, it's it's just absolutely necessary whether it was out of our control and yeah, how I, I, yes right, but so, i mean for so, the most yeah. part we can say if it gets to a certain point we can stop this and, and look in a different direction but that's not the case so i'm just uh let's that's something we need to move forward on and let the uh, past be the past, and, and we're working well in the future and the present now. So I have a few other items to report tonight. On December 17th, I participated and spoke at the annual Wreaths Across America ceremony that was held at the Forest Hill Cemetery. This effort to place wreaths on our deceased service members' graves at Christmas time is growing each year. A recently departed 72-year member of the Fernonia Fire Department and World War II Army veteran George C. Tatt Jr. was honored in the first new responder category during the ceremony as well as many others. I encourage everyone to attend the next ceremony in mid-December. I attended the Fredonia American Legion annual Christmas party and the northern, monthly Northern Chautauqua County Club Association meetings during the same weekend of. I was honored to assist Fredonia Place in judging the annual employee and resident decorating efforts. It was a lot of fun and it certainly got everyone into Christmas spirit. Uh, a few weeks ago, 
during those snowstorms. I had we had a travel advisory just before Christmas, and I placed a travel advisory as a precaution for our village to keep our residents safe during the clement weather. I want to thank our residents for their assistance during this time and commend our streets department on their efforts to keep the roads clear. Many thanks to all involved. I want to thank our village employees and all departments who keep our village running each day. Those that work the holiday shifts, I want to give an extra shout out to them and thank them for serving our community each day and especially on the holidays. I hope everyone enjoyed the holiday season. Just before the new year, I was happy to proclaim December 29th as Mark and Sue Staszynski Day in the village, honoring them for their retirement, serving our village as owners of the Fronia Food Mart. I represented them with their proclamation during my last visit to the store. I thank them for over 44 years of dedication to their small business, serving Fredonia. I wish them well in their retirement. Today is National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. I would like to thank our officers from the Fredonia Police Department and SUNY Fredonia University Police for all the work they do each day serving our community. Your dedication does not go unnoticed by me. I would also like to thank, uh, we have other local community police departments and we also have the Sheriff's Department and State Police as well. I'd like to thank them. I wish our residents a very happy new year. And that's all I have to report tonight. Trustee Linden. Um, I looked into uh, two, a couple of grant opportunities that I forwarded to our treasurer, Alyssa, who said that she would look into it. Um, actually, Mark Twitchell sent um, the opportunity um, that he found um, for purchasing purchase agreements um, for municipalities in New York State um, to for the, the New York Power Authority blended power. Off, um, which has offers um, the green energy and um, the, new, the New York Municipal Energy uh, Program that offers uh, group rates for electricity and gas. Uh, she said she would look into that. That's possible. If, if we could get a savings, that may, maybe it's an opportunity. But also, I, um, I found that there was a, um, uh, the federal government has uh, $1.5 billion available um, through their 2023 uh, RAISE grant program. Um, and they're accepting applications, and she said she would look into that, and that is for uh, the Federal Highway Administration, administration for local aid support, um, and it is um, directed for communities that um, uh, have of smaller size and, um, um, and uh, income levels and things like that. So it, it may be an opportunity for us to get some, some of uh, uh, highway um, grant money in, in order to uh, fix the roads and things. Um, but she said she would look into that too. But that's all I have. Thank you. Trustee Twitchell. Um, yes, I was contacted by uh, a couple of people about the closing of the WCA home and how sad they were to hear about it and asked if there was anything we could do. And I, I really don't think that's possible for us to be involved in that. I, I know they did want to have a committee started to maybe look into what that building could be. Um, so far as our involvement, um, I don't think there's really anything the village can do about that. And we're, you know, just so sad to hear that. I mean, it's, it's been part of our community for over a hundred years, and um, if anyone has any ideas or thoughts about it, uh, they can contact me. I, I'd appreciate that and see if if we can do something to help that situation. But it really doesn't sound like there's not much that we can do about it at this point. That day, um, I. Or I emailed the board. I was not aware of that before that day. They, mm -hmm. uh, the administrator emailed me, and the uh, board president or chairman uh, gave me a call later on that day. I do know that uh, there's various entities uh, that are working on possible buyers for that mm -hmm. and to move forward there. So uh, you're correct. It's it, the problem that the reason that that facility is going under is they have Medicaid uh, right. residents mm -hmm. and Medicaid only uh, roughly uh, 
gives the, these uh, businesses like forty-seven dollars mm -hmm. a day in reimbursement, and there's no way that these uh, businesses can maintain. Uh, I think uh, they're roughly uh, losing seventy thousand dollars roughly a month in expenses because they weren't fully occupied, and the ones that they were occupied with were uh, Medicaid, a majority of them, so right. you don't get the uh, reimbursement back. Mm -hmm. So our, our health care system is broken in New York State. We need to work on that you know, on a local level. There's not a whole lot we can do. Um, I'm not sure, other than finding maybe other investors, if we were notified earlier, maybe we could have helped out in some mm -hmm. situation, but I do know, do know that there is possible investors to move forward in that facility, so it's not all a lost cause. I'm not sure what that would mean for the current residents. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's private, another private company, oh, it could be, you know, sort of like Fredonia Place where they don't accept Medicaid patients and it's mm -hmm. not the same situation. So I don't know the specifics, but there is possibilities moving forward, so That's uh, good. for that facility. But yes, I totally agree with you. It's very mm -hmm. sad. It's uh, been a historic. Uh, uh, right. business and building there for hundreds of years so mm -hmm. sad to see thank you thank you trustee bird uh the only new thing i have is i met with uh kayla and we discussed the summer concert series we're looking at adding one more concert next year and we're actually looking at uh booking higher level bands than what we had last year last year's bands were very good we're actually looking at booking higher level bands and possibly getting even some uh, local business sponsors for the bands. Um, so we have discussed that and we're also in negotiations to have somebody running our concert series as far as the sound, the billing, the band relations and that stuff as well as part of that, uh, just to streamline the whole situation. But we're working on it and we're looking to have a better summer concert series than we had last year. And. Uh, Last year was pretty good, so I'm I'm really happy to think what could happen next summer. Also, the other the uh, Russell Joy, uh, we were just going over the inventory a little bit about Russell Joy and the stuff for the crafts and the stuff like that, and uh, there was a surplus on some of the stuff. We actually have a very good handle on what we can do with the Parks and Rec program next year, so uh, Kayla's well ahead on that as well. So just wanted to report everything. She's doing a great job for us. Super. As far as the concerts, can I request like you maybe contract out with Kiss? We're, we're looking at them. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. Keep uh -huh. that. Keep that in the back of your head. Okay. Trusty Syracuse. Nothing to report. Thank you, Trusty Esperson. Uh, just a couple things. Um, so um, Professor Lanning from the college who had been here previously and gave us a brief. Um, synopsis of one of the projects he's looking at. His students this summer will be uh, will begin the uh, G location um, of all the shutoff valves in the village, um, matching and match them with navigation instructions, photo references, and additional data to allow DPW to perform the job more efficiently. Uh, the The cost of that project is fifteen thousand dollars which the college is completely funding. Um, the next project that they're going to start this summer as well, or this spring, I think, uh, they're going to sample water from houses and businesses in the village to quantify areas that have a greater potential or risk of heavy metal leaching, which is lead in the pipes. <coughs> uh, the village would benefit by knowing the line composition and if um, so it would be contained in certain areas and we would know which areas um, the, the infrastructure um, needs uh, it needs improvement or, or uh, completely redoing um, rather rather immediately because the potential the potential risks are high um, that's probably going to be a three-year project with a total cost of about $38,000, which includes the testing materials and the student support. I've spoken with Nate Altrich as well as the Northern Chautauqua Community Foundation, and they are, interesting. They are interested in uh, funding a portion of it. The village may have to uh, step up and provide um, some funds, but I'm working with them to find out exactly how much they're going to provide before um, before I come and ask for funds for that. 
but I think even if we have to maybe provide half of those funds, the uh, benefits to the village far outweigh what the cost associated with that would be, which would be eighteen thousand dollars spread over three years. So, thank you for okay. spearheading that. Okay, treasurer's report. You have anything, Rosa? Nothing to report tonight. Okay, additional reports. The Fredoni Police Department report for the month of December 2022. Total incidents reported 697. Fredoni Central Schools called for service. Three accidents, 20. Arrests reported 16. Vehicle and traffic incidents 46, domestic incidents 17, and parking tickets 192. Thank you. Move on to resolutions then. Whereas village law section 33023 states that except as otherwise provided herein or in this chapter, the term of office of treasurer and clerk shall be two official years. And whereas there is no other provision under village law section 3302 that applies to the appointment terms for the village treasurer, and whereas the board of trustees has determined that the village treasurer appointment is a two year term pursuant to the village charter and village law. Now therefore be it resolved that the board of trustees approves the appointment of Erlissa LeBeau as village treasurer for a two year term, which commences on January 9th, 2023, ending on January 9th, 2025. Second. It's been a motion and a second. Trustee Linden? Aye. Trustee Twitchell? Aye. Trustee Bird? Aye. Trustee Syracuse? Aye. Trustee Esperson? Aye. Carried. Whereas Village Law Section 3-3023 states that except as is otherwise provided herein, in, herein or in this chapter, the term of office of treasurer and clerk shall be two official years, and whereas there is no other provision under, law, under Village Law sec Section 3 302 that applies to the appointment terms for the village clerk and whereas the board of trustees has determined that the village clerk appointment is a two-year term pursuant to the village charter and village law. Now therefore be it resolved that the board of trustees approves the appointment of Anne Marie Johnston as village clerk to a two-year term which commences on January 9th, 2023 ending on January 9th, 2025. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Tw uh, Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried. Be it resolved that the following appointed officials and employees are hereby appointed, reappointed to their respective positions and at their present salaries and benefits or salary and benefits as modified by board resolution or budget adoption for the ensuing official year commencing January 11th, 2021 and ending January 11th, 2022 unless sooner removed from office or employment as provided by the charter or other applicable law. Those dates need to be added to the dates. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. 22, 23. Chief, and so it'll be January 2022, January 2023. One, Chief Inspection Officer, Building Inspector, Zoning Enforcement Officer, Chuck LaBarbera. No, it's 23. It'll be 20 this year, 2023. 2023. Right. To 2024. Right. <laughs> Parks and Recreation Director, Kayla Sullivan. Receiver of Taxes, Alyssa LeBeau. Street Supervisor Commissioner, Scott Marshall. Scott Marsh. Associate Village Justice, Nancy Dietzen. Records Management Officer, Anna Marie Johnston. Be it further resolved that the Board of Trustees further reserves all rights under the Charter in Section 75 of the Civil Service Law for removal or other disciplinary action for any past or future acts or conduct of employees or officers of the village, which may fall within the purview of Section 75 of the Civil Service Law of the Charter. Second. Been a motion and a second. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. And Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried. Be resolved that a special meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Village of Fronia be held on January 23rd, 2023 at 6 p.m. to hold a public hearing Approval of a cable television agreement between Spectrum Northeast LLC and the Village of Fredonia and to consider any other business that may come for this board. A second. There's a motion and a second. Hold Trust. On. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, right. there's more. Oh, sorry. There's more to the Next resolution. Next page. <laughs> I was seconding too soon. <laughs> Be it resolved that the Village Board of Trustees of the Village of Fredonia hereby schedules a public hearing on the 23rd day of January 2023 at 6 p.m. in Trustees Room, second floor in Village Hall, 911 Church Street. 
for Don New York to receive comments on the proposed 2020 local laws, which are on file in the office of the village clerk of the village of Fredonia, and be it further resolved that the village clerk is hereby directed to public publish notice of this hearing pursuant to village law. Now I second. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Been a motion and a second. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Sir, uh, Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried. Be resolved that the observer, West 2nd Street, Jamestown, New York, is hereby designated the official newspaper of the village of Fredonia for the year beginning January 21st, 2023, ending December 31st, 2023. I'll second that. Been a motion and a second. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried. Be it resolved that the following banks pursuant to village law, section 4-4, are hereby designated the official banks for the village of Fredonia for the year beginning January 1st, 2023 and ending December 31st, 2023. Manufacturers and Traders Trust, Trust Co., 1 East Main Street, Fredonia, New York. MBIA Municipal Investors Service Corporation of Denver, Colorado. J.P. Morgan Chase & Co. of New York, New York. Second. It's been a motion and a second. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried. Be it, res be it resolved, notice is hereby given that the fiscal affairs of the village of Fredonia for the period beginning June 1st, 2023 and ending May 31st, 2024. Nope, that's for our audit. No, that's so audit. it was from, this is right. These are right? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's okay. Right. Has been examined by the firm of Drescher and Malecki, LLP, 3083 <laughs> William Street, Buffalo, New York, and that the report has been filed in the village clerk's office where it is available as a public record for inspection by all interest parties. Be it further resolved, a notice shall be published in the official newspaper within 10 days after filing the report. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Trustee Linden. Clear that's, that's June 1st, 2021. That's the correct? Yes. On, yes. On, yeah. through, on, okay. um, through May 31st, 2022. Um, aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. And Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried. Whereas the village of Fredonia has an immediate opening in the position of wastewater, water treatment plan operator trainee. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Alexander Rivera of 351 Lecture <coughs> Drive East, Stockard, New York, is hereby hired as a full-time wastewater water treatment plan operator trainee to work at the filtration plant at an hourly rate of $18.48 and a six-month probationary period effective January 10th, 2023. Second. It's been a motion and a second. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried. Whereas the village of Fredonia requires making adjustments to the Russell Joy Park Pavilion Rentals, uh, not only Russell Joy Park, but off, also Hamlet Street, uh, whereas the Recreation Department, based on cost increases to maintain the park, has recommended increasing the rates $20 for each rental category to the rates below. Upper Kiwanis for residents, 45 on weekdays, 60 on weekends. For non-profits, 40 on weekdays, 45 on weekends. And for non-residents, $70 Monday through Sunday. For the lower rotary uh, pavilion, $45 uh, for residents Monday through Friday. Saturday and Sunday, $60 an hour, or $60 a day. For non-profit, Monday through Friday, $40. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, $45. And non-residents, Monday through Sunday, $70. And for Hamlet Street, $35 uh, Monday through Friday. Saturday and Sunday, $45. Nonprofits, 35 Monday through Friday, Saturday and Sunday, 40, and non residents, Monday through Sunday, 55. Be it resolved that the Russell Joy Pavilion and Hamlet uh, Pavilion rental prices charges are listed as above as approved. Second. It's been a motion and a second. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried. Whereas the Board of Trustees previously created and established the position of personnel specialist effective April 26, 2021. And whereas the Board of Trustees of the Village of Fredonia previously provisionally appointed Michelle Cuyava to the position personal specialist effective April 26, 2021. 
And whereas the current Board of Trustees believes that the functions performed by the position of personal specialist can be performed more efficiently through other positions within the village government. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the position of personal specialist is hereby abolished effective immediately. And be it further resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby terminates the provisional appointment of Michelle Cuiava effective immediately. And be it further resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby authorizes the mayor to author a letter thanking Mrs. Cuiava for her service to the village. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Trustee London? Aye. Trustee Twitchell? Aye. Trustee Bird? Aye. Trustee Syracuse? Aye. And Trustee Esperson? Aye. Carried. The next Village of Fredonia workshop and board meeting will take place Monday, January 23rd, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. in the trustee room, second floor of Village Hall. I would quickly like to enter to executive session to discuss uh, the the uh, uh, employment of uh, Village Hall employees and do we need to discuss any other yes other just employment of other village employees um, has to be specific to in a, a certain department uh, well, we need to discuss chief operator for water treatment plant. Chief um, operator position. Mm -hmm. Water um, treatment plant. Water treat I, plant. There's several. So and, any other? And we, we, we want to mention the special meeting January 19th, 630. We have a discussion of any. Uh, Hold on here before we. Okay, so I'll go. I'll, do, I'll restate that in a second. So we have the need to discuss the employment of personnel. The village hall, water treatment plant, and compensation of village hall employees. Okay, that's kind of and where the village, yeah. Legal, um, possible, possible legal, legal matter. Legal matter. Um, Litigation. With, within the, yeah. the, will it be the, actually the police and fire department? Okay. All right, so we have a motion to enter into executive session for all of those reasons. May I have a motion and a second, please? So moved. A second. Second. There's been a motion and a second to enter into executive session. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Esperson. Aye. Thank you. And there's a special meeting that will be held on uh, January 19th. Correct? Yes. At what time? 6.30. At 6.30 p.m. in the trustee room, second floor of Village Hall. Regarding? I just, we need to state that, I believe. Chip, what do we got to do to shut this down? Just uh, turn the switch off. 